wake up and I do have a long day today. Um, the goal here is South Dakota and Black Hills country. It's a big miles day, longest day yet of my trip. Okay, so I was doing my morning once around and checked my chain and it's just ever so loose. Uh, you know, do I put it off until tonight? No, I got my wrenches out and I'm gonna adjust my chain tension before I get going. As I rode north on Interstate 25, uh, I approached Denver and passed through the metropolis of Denver rather quickly. I don't know. I don't know what's real anymore. Some thoughts. That'll. It's what the open road will do to you. So I'm pretty much in the middle of nowhere, and my gas indicator is doing that. So I'm here at the Crazy Horse Monument. I was absolutely and utterly all by myself, and I loved it. Look who's waiting for me, all safe and sound out here. Somebody's been cutting wood around here, so I found this log and uh, rolled it over here and made a nice little table for my morning coffee and breakfast. I'll give you an idea of my surroundings here. What this video will not impress upon you is the smell. It smells like Christmas. It's just a really lovely pine forest smell. Somebody's been cutting all these down and piling them up. This is national forestry land, so, you know, they manage it. So, so far, this has been my favorite camp spot yet. Um, completely isolated out here. I never saw a soul. I never heard a soul. Um, the only two souls that came around were two mule deer that were just inquisitive and came slowly walking down off the hill to see what, who was making all the noise. <laughs> I wasn't making that much noise, but I guess I wasn't being a very good neighbor and I, I made some sounds. But they were curious and uh, fun to ride in on a gravel road that had some washed out areas and some muddy spots that uh, I had to navigate around. Shinko 705s uh, are the tires on the bike. They're, they're 
they did great. You know, they do such a good job in, so what have I done on these tires so far? Of course, a lot of highway, I've ridden in the city, I've gone 85, 80 miles an hour down the interstates. Um, no problems, does all of that fine. I've gone through a twisty, curvy, wet road in the rain uh, in Bryce Canyon. Was that Bryce Canyon? No, I'm sorry. It was uh, Mesa Verde. Still a canyon. And, uh, you know, if the tires slipped and I go down and off the road, you go way down off the road. So, you know, complete faith in them there uh, on the wet road. And now... There's been times where I thought, man, it, I w might be just a bit more comfortable on like a Goldwing for those long interstate miles and, and a lot of this riding. But then I came to parts of this road to get to this camp spot that I would not have wanted to be on a Goldwing on. Uh, and I was just happy as can be on the V-Strom with those Shinkos on it. So, hey... Thanks to Alpha Moto for sponsoring this trip. Um, Alpha Moto has um, been a place for me to get some great tools that I use in my shop uh, on my motorcycles. And uh, just a great resource for motorcycle mechanics and people that enjoy motorcycling in general. Yeah, that's honestly so much better than the motel room coffee, <laughs> which was actually drip water through coffee grounds. For some reason, this ends up tasting better. Maybe it's the environment. And so while my oatmeal water is boiling and uh, I'm cooking that, what am I going to be doing to pass the time? You guessed it lube my chain. The other thing I'll say that's been absolutely heavenly about this spot is not a single mosquito uh, and not really even any flies. I found one moth in my tent this morning which must have followed the light in there when I had it unzipped at some point which I don't do for long. Um, but I know I'm headed into Minnesota, Michigan, uh, you know, upstate New York, places where there is standing fresh water and I'm going to be running into a lot of mosquitoes. And so to have a camping experience like this in a place where there's, uh, there's water, but it's all running water and uh, mosquito larvae don't breed in running flowing water. It has to be sitting pools like lakes. So um, it's nice. It's really nice not to have the bugs. This is the first place, first morning I've woken up. And I don't have this desire to go, go, go and get on the road. Um, and that doesn't mean I'm tired of riding. It's really a reflection of just how awesome this place is. <laughs> I don't want to leave it. Um... I suppose I'd get lonely eventually, but I got my two mule deer friends to keep me company. Except they're nowhere to be found right now. Anyone? Hello? Maybe I'll get going. Every morning, check the oil. about level and I'm in the range every morning is just a once around it's like a, a pilot on an airplane you know you you do a once around your machine before you get going most of the time you don't find any problems and then one time you do
anytime I pull out something that uh, I know is not absolutely biodegradable, like something that's not going to become part of the earth within a couple days, uh, you know, I keep track of it. So, you know, I've got these paper wrappers from the oatmeal container, but, or the oatmeal, but these are actually like a plastic lined paper because they got to keep the oatmeal fresh inside. So there's a layer of plastic bonded to the paper. I'm not leaving these here and I'm not going to start a fire and burn them. That was the other thing I wanted to mention. I did not start a campfire last night. Uh, because I simply didn't know if it was legal to do it. Maybe it was. Uh, I don't know. But when in doubt, just play it safe and don't start fires that you sh don't absolutely need to. And I didn't have to to enjoy this place. In fact, it's been my favorite camp spot yet, and I didn't have a campfire. So um, there's that. But like even dental floss, I, I got to do my hygiene in the morning. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to keep track of this stuff, and it's leaving with me. Leave no trace. Please, camping anywhere on this planet, leave no trace. Thank you from the rest of us. So between my dental floss and my two packets of oatmeal, I can squeeze it up. There's my trash. This is the only thing that I could possibly leave here that would harm the environment. I'm taking it with me. It's that easy. Kind of a different looking ladybug. Different to me. I am concerned that this may not be a native species for this area. I certainly didn't grow up with them in North Dakota. And I'm not that far here in South Dakota, so... Perhaps, maybe it's supposed to be here. I didn't necessarily grow up in pine forests either. Leave no trace. That log was here when I got here. Well, it wasn't right there, but I didn't bring it with me. Well, every day is a new day, and this was bound to happen eventually. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends, and I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. 
Like a band of gypsies, we roll down the highway. We're the best of friends, insisting that the world keep turning our way. That sucked and our way on the road again. I'm posting this, warts and all. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Ooh, rear brake only, thank you. Coming in hot. <laughs> oh, there I drifted it a little bit in that downshift. Didn't match yours very well, but it's kind of fun. Oh boy. How did I get in here? Oh. Okay, some nice uh, Black Hills backcountry roads for a while. By the way, if you guys want to find your way in here, this asphalt road is 385 north and south, and I'm in Whitehorse Road, and then there's a little, uh, little logging road off of that that you just saw me riding on, so you can find this place. It was a great campsite. On to my home state, North Dakota. I'm sweating. It got hot fast when the sun came up. And that breeze through this mesh jacket feels very good right now. So far, the mesh jacket has been the right choice. Had I brought my cold weather jacket, one, I don't know where I would have stored it this whole time. I mean, I could have done it. And two, um, oh, you know, I have not been cold at any point, and I still have many layers of fleece and thermal underwear that I can put on um, so you know bring on the colder stuff I'm not saying 40s I wouldn't be too happy in that but uh, anything in the 50s I'm ready for for that and uh, I would doubt in the peak of the summer that I'm gonna run into that So I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about this part of the country and riding in it. Um, these ditches here with the grass, there's deer in them. In fact, I just saw a mule deer and he was looking at me. So I'm constantly scanning left and right of the road for those ears and their heads, um, if they get startled, they jump up and run, and they don't always run in the opposite direction of the road. Sometimes they just decide the best idea for them is to run right across the road, right in front of you. So, you know, almost like I would in Los Angeles traffic, I'm uh, hovering my foot and my fingers over the brake in case I really need to stop fast but this is not the highest risk time of day the really high risk time is dawn and dusk they are active then and it's just something you learn growing up in this part of the country the other thing my dad reminded me of in a phone conversation uh, last night was that all the roads in this part of South Dakota and North Dakota 
there are no diagonal roads that run northeast or southwest or the other diagonal. Everything is north and south or east and west. And so if you're headed on an angle like I am today, you must zigzag. And I am doing that. The other thing too is these are the kinds of roads where if you run into the highway patrol, it's happened to me in the past in North Dakota, Minnesota, I'm sure South Dakota is similar. You know, if, if the speed limit is 55, you can do 59, maybe 60. But if you're doing 61, honest to God, they're going to give you a ticket. And it's really a lot about the culture up here. I was raised in it. There's so many wonderful things about the hardiness, the generosity, um, the openness of, of the, the northern Midwestern culture. People are super nice, but they are also very black and white thinkers. Um, there is right and there is wrong and there is no gray area on just about any issue. Uh, and, and opinions are deeply set and strong. And that plays into, hey, there's a rule on the rule books that says 55 miles per hour regardless of any situational evidence, uh, any reasonableness. You know, if I was doing 65 on this road with the kind of riding skills I have, I mean, I've got 35,000 miles of lane splitting in Los Angeles traffic under my belt. Those are just the miles literally lane splitting. There's another 30 to 40,000 miles of just riding in LA traffic, not splitting the lanes, which is still challenging enough. So, you know, I'm, I'm not bragging about my riding skills. I'm just saying some people can handle 65 miles an hour on this road. I would think anybody could on a day like today. Um, doesn't matter. It's 55, you're getting a ticket period. It's cultural. Landscape's gonna look like this for a long time. Hey, my first holiday station on this trip. Uh, I grew up with these gas stations. They're an upper, upper Midwest brand. And, you know, they're no different from all the others, except that this one reminds me of home and growing up. So, I'm getting near home. So one thing I will say, for this leg of the trip, up, uh, you know, headed north, out of South Dakota, up into North Dakota, especially western and central North Dakota, I am topping off this gas tank as high as it'll go, which is a practice I did down in the southwest also, because uh, you just never know how long you're going to go without a station. I just had to stop and check this place out. This is what I'm feeling hitting my ankles everywhere I go are these grasshoppers. They're in the road, but they're everywhere. Look at them going. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little sticky. I saw a really old one over here. These grasshoppers are amazing. Well, is it for a child? 
just a very humble marker. Born December 1891, died June 2nd, 1909. Very short life, Susan. Oh no, Joseph, son of Susan. There's an old marker for someone. I don't know, you know, like, do I have my remains buried in a place like this where eventually it's completely forgotten? Or, you know, do I get cremated and then I'm forgotten like really quick? I'm trying to find the old ones. Oh, there's one. You guys can just stay down. I'm not, well, I suppose I'll step on some of you if you don't jump. Oh, Lillian was born and died on the same day, November 8th of 1911. And Franklin, infant son, born and died the year before to David and Pearl. Yeah, same family. So this couple had two children within a year of each other that were you know, I don't know, stillborn, or they didn't make it. A lot of sadness there. Infant, 1916. Hazel, born 1918, died 1929. You know, I'm getting the impression that life here in North Dakota, or in South Dakota, I am still officially in South Dakota, you know, was pretty tough even at the turn of the century where people were living in cities and having longer lives. But, uh, you know, people had big families because a lot of your kids weren't going to make it. It was just kind of a thing. Tough emotionally. I don't know that us softies could handle it today. This is a really neat one. For Bobby, somebody put flowers here, and uh, 1932 to 1936, Little Bud of Love, Bobby, uh, another young one. Here's a veteran from World War II. He made it to 1986, and it would seem that his wife made it. Uh, well, up until five years ago. Now they lie together. Thank you, Paul, for your service. So I found this gas station in literally the middle of nowhere, and uh, but this is great. It reminds me of how things used to be in Minnesota, where you've got, they call it super unlended. It's 87 octane, but it's got 10% ethanol added. But then they've got the no ethanol stuff, which of course I can't get in California, and my vintage bikes would love this, but you can't get it. Folks with vintage bikes up here are blessed to have this stuff. I just had to stop at this drive-in. I'm likely not to find something green or full of nutrition, but um, you know, it's it's a the place has tone. Let's put it that way. So just as evidence of that black and white thinking in the culture that I was talking about, when she took my order. Um, she asked me, can I get a name for the order? Well, that's clearly because maybe there are times when it's busy and we need to keep the orders straight. 
And so she has been trained to ask for a name with every order. It's just part of the process. And so I give her my name so that it doesn't get screwed up with anyone else here. I don't have to pay until after I've gotten the food. So that too speaks to the culture here. It's like, you know, why would you pay for something you haven't received? Um, and there's a trust level there. There's a, an understanding that people are generally good. And another thing I gotta point out, my change was handed to me with all the bills in order. Again, it just, it speaks to the culture here. And I like that. And I'm still conventional kill. I'm going, I'm, I'm, like I say, 105. I know that one year I was even better than that. Didn't get her adjusted. But. Can't you get the tail of the consumer trash? Yeah. Well, see, then that's it. Well, see, that's what Keith and Caden have a problem with where they got that mill. They ran the cattle on it too long. They packed the ground. Oh. See, and that's why Roush doesn't Roush and even Brown don't like people drop, having cattle on their field. Because in certain places where it's uh, moist, the cows go down there and they'll pack that soil. And then the only way to open that soil up is to open it with a disc or a chisel. And then you lose the moisture. Right. And some of the guys will go to fall, cultivate, you know, work the ground in the fall. That way the snow goes in, you know, moisture from the snow goes right in. Okay, a little bit of an oddball stop, but I wanted to make this one. I am in Bismarck, North Dakota. It is the capital of the state of North Dakota, but more importantly, that hospital, St. Alexis Hospital, uh, in front of you there, <laughs> in front of my camera, I believe that's the hospital I was born in. And uh, the story of my birth is interesting in that I'm uh, an adopted infant. I was the product of two young people conceiving a child before they really probably wanted to in life. And uh, anyways, I was that child. I was born there and adopted by a family in Fargo and grew up there. But at the age of 33, I, I got reunited with uh, my birth mother who came here as a 17 almost well just turned 18 year old uh, and had me right before Christmas and then had to leave me here and she didn't see me for another 33 years so that was kind of uh, an interesting story and the story gets more interesting but I'm actually uh, gonna try to hook up with my birth family in Ohio on this trip on the return and so I did want to stop here and capture this place because it, it'll tie into uh, the, the bigger story later on in this series. It is so flat in eastern North Dakota. Growing up, I once watched my dog run away from home for three days. When the landscape doesn't offer much to enjoy with the eyes, the V-Strom is so good at just eating miles. I mean, look at this thing go on the interstate, and it'll do this all day if you want it to. Okay, I am in Fargo, North Dakota, my hometown. I uh, lived here 25 years from age zero to well, 25. Um, staying in that hotel behind me, I'm 
uh, that's because I'm visiting my dad. My dad's going to stay with me. Um, long story. But um, it's fun to be back. This is going to be a wrap for today. Um, it's really interesting to be in the west of North Dakota to see how flat it is again now that I live among mountains. And uh, I've, I haven't approached Fargo from the west in probably 30 years. It was a, a really uh, interesting experience for me. So off to get a bite and I will sign off for this day. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll be in Fargo for a couple of days. I've got some things from my book that I want to highlight and show you guys that you know, I've, I wrote about some of these places in creating Mr. Corton, and now I can actually show you the places. Mm -hmm.